are you? Great. Oh, it's so good to see you. You're I just the you woman too. to talk to with everything happening. <laughs> it's been a while. I know. I'm glad I was able to get some time on your calendar. Welcome to lunch at Iron Gate. Uh, the chef sent a couple of things out for you to enjoy some of the best of what we have to offer. Looks so great. I have a little spring vegetable Caesar. There's also some of our caramelized ricotta gnocchi. One of my personal favorites, the sesame crusted feta. We also have our lamb caftetes and some arancini for you to enjoy today as well. So, so much has been going on in the last year. Obviously, at FERC, there's been this giant spotlight on the commission, right? This is a commission that no one used to pay attention to. I remember when I first started um, in in the energy sector, no one even knew what FERC was. Now it's now it's the the big game in town. Um, what, do you think the spotlight has been a distraction? How do you think it's been impacting the work that the commission actually does? I'd like to think it hasn't been. Certainly more people are paying attention to FERC. Because more people are aware, there's a heightened awareness about the work that FERC does and how it impacts um, communities and how it impacts industry and economies. My hope and what, from my experience, I don't think it's been a distraction. Has it made it more challenging? Absolutely. But I hope that this commission, even once Palson, Commissioner Palson uh, transitions, and congrats to Rob, he's a dear friend, I hope that they will continue to stay focused on the work that they need to do. Well, and of course this sets up um, a scenario where you have four commissioners. Um, the opportunity for two two decisions opens up um, and that's challenging. Um, how is that going to impact some of sort of the thornier issues that FERC deals with? I think we're seeing a glimpse now with some of the decisions that are coming out of FERC. We're seeing not only concurrences and dissents. I think we're seeing a lot of statements being issued and I would urge FERC followers to take a look at those. I think they will be a glimpse into what the future could look like at FERC with a 2-2 potential on some of the votes. For example, if DOE moves forward and uses its authority under the Federal Power Act mm -hmm. um, uh, in this um, valuing of nuclear in terms of national security, then that triggers FERC action, and that that is something where we could see a split decision. Potentially. I think we have to peel back the layers a bit and really understand what FERC's mission is uh, to ensure, uh, the, oversee the reliability of the grid, to ensure just and reasonable rates in wholesale electricity markets, to ensure that there is no um, undue discrimination. Uh, in markets. Is it within FERC's purview to um, to place a value on electricity resources? You know, we hear a lot of talk about, um, you know, how to value nuclear. Mm -hmm. What is the Commission's responsibility in those situations? So FERC is really um, challenged by the circumstances in which we find ourselves. We've never been in a place where so many nuclear facilities are going offline. Having come up in the south in Arkansas, um, I very well appreciate the important role of nuclear. I, it's been a part of my public speak, if you will, the fact that we need to appreciate that, uh, not only in uh, ensuring at the state level that those resources come to bear, but also at the federal level. But when we get to FERC, that's a difficult place to suggest such a thing because FERC really should not be in the, the uh, game of picking winners and losers. We have to figure out how to make sure that resources like nuclear can stay competitive to be able to participate in the markets because it's a 24-7, 365 resource. You know, when you look at nuclear, you think about the fact that it's clean, Yes, um, it's reliable, it's base load. And it doesn't emit carbon. Yeah but it's, it is facing challenges as it needs to compete in this um, ever more competitive market. Um, how does it sort of overcome some of those challenges? Well, I think that, first of all, I still do quite a bit of international work. Nuclear is still on track globally as part of our international effort to lower, lower carbon emissions but the U.S. has to do its part. 
I think it starts at the state level, quite frankly. And I think we see the state regulators doing their part in some very challenging and risky um, projects and industry doing theirs. Figuring out what the future should look like and then making the decisions and investments. Consumers are paying for that to make sure that we get there. The pathway then has to meet the state level efforts with matching that with market fixes. You, um, you've referenced uh, Arkansas mm -hmm. several times. Um, are there foods you miss? <laughs> We're sitting at a great yes. DC restaurant <laughs> and I, obviously this food is amazing, yes. but I have to imagine there are things you miss from, from home. So there are a lot of things I miss that I shouldn't have a lot of, like fried catfish. Oh. <laughs> um, I love good tomatoes and ripe peaches. I make a great peach cobbler. I have to invite you over to try it sometime. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I also have found, I live in Arlington and work in DC, there are so many things that are Southern to me here. Yeah. And I still find a lot of warmth and hospitality right here in the Beltway. Yeah. So it's pretty surprising. Yeah, it's true. There are uh, touches of that mm -hmm. sort of Southern feel, mm -hmm. I think. Uh, and then you get a little bit of the New York influence Absolutely. too. Absolutely, I like that too. I've yeah. got family in New York. Yeah. And I think you need that to survive, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely, and I think that that's why we see the restaurant industry th thriving yeah. in, um, in Washington. Absolutely. Well, thank you. Thank you. This was great. Cheers. Perfect. Cheers. I wish you well. Thank you. Same to you.